Hi, this is Professor Gerald Friedman, Department of Economics, University of Massachusetts. And we're here today to talk about social insurance and why private insurance usually won't work, especially not in the healthcare sector. Now, first of all, what do we mean by insurance? Insurance is the process where you give up something now, a guaranteed loss now, in order to minimize the really bad things that might happen and might not. You could pay insurance, you could pay life insurance for your entire life, and the day before you die you'll say, God, that was a really bad investment. I spent all this money on premiums and I never died. Well, when you die, your children, your spouse will be happy that you have the life insurance. The same for sickness, health insurance. You go along being healthy and thinking what a bad idea it is for you to continue to carry life, uh, health insurance until you get sick. And then you'll be glad. Now, the problem with private insurance, as we find in the United States, the only country in the world that relies on private health insurance to uh, provide health coverage for its population. We're the only country. We also note we spend way more on health care, including insurance, than any other country. And we are significantly less healthy than other countries at our level of income and way less healthy than other countries at anything like our level of health care expenditures. Think about it. Private health care, less healthy outcomes, and spend more. It has to be that way. This isn't an accident. Private health care, health insurance, is inherently inefficient. And it, some of it's on the side of the consumers. There's moral hazard. You don't want health insurance when you're healthy. You don't want to spend the money. Young people think, oh, okay, I'll be healthy forever. I don't need health insurance. Who gets health insurance? People who think they're going to be sick. Or even, this is the moral hazard problem, people who know they're sick. So the health insurance companies are constantly monitoring to keep out people who are already sick. That's problem one. With that goes companies waste huge amounts cherry picking and lemon dropping. Cherry picking the possible clients for the people who are not going to need their coverage and lemon dropping to get rid of people. The problem is that 70% of your expenditures as a health insurance company goes to 10% of your clients. People are healthy, they're cheap for you. You pay for an occasional doctor visit, occasional blood tests. But people get sick and wow, the bills pile up really fast. That's why we want health insurance. We want insurance in case we have an accident and we're in the ICU at three, four, five thousand dollars a day. We want insurance in case we get cancer and a mastectomy of course, $50,000, radiation, thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars more. We want insurance because when we get sick, it's really expensive. And what about the company? That's when they want to get rid of you. They only want you when you're healthy. They sit there thinking, God, if only we could get rid of the sick people, we'd make so much money. Think about it. They don't just think about it. They act on it. Companies engage. Private health insurance companies are always out there figuring out ways to cherry pick. Select only the healthy people. And lemon drop. Get rid of the people who are not healthy. And how do you do this? You do things like you have people... Anybody can sign up for health insurance. This was the case in Milwaukee. Companies said anybody can sign up for health insurance with us. Um, they just need to fill out a form. And the form's available at our office which is on the fourth floor of a walk-up without an elevator. <laughs> Not very many people using wheelchairs. You applied for insurance at that company. Um, you do things like that. 
Shoe companies profit by selling more shoes. Insurance companies profit by not selling to some people. You know, upper floor offices, paperwork, and the hassle factor. You just make it really hard to file claims. Now, who's going to care about that? Healthy people don't even know it's hard to file claims, that they have to file in triplicate, that they have to fill out these things, that you have to get your doctors to sign these things and write reports and all this. Healthy people don't even know. It's the sick people who know about those things and they start looking for other companies. They look for other companies. This is wasteful. Then there's just plain rescissions, which are banned under the health care law passed last year in Congress. Um, but were very widespread before that, and we'll see if the companies figure out a way to do it since. California, in 2008, California insurance companies dropped 20,000 sick people. They just canceled the insurance. Yeah. I mean, people showed up with pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, um, they were hit by cars. Insurance was canceled. Yeah. I, I wish they would let me buy insurance after I got sick, they won't let me do that. I don't understand the logic of saying you can cancel insurance. But anyway, think about it from the insurance company's perspective. If they don't do things like that, then they risk going into the death spiral. Cheating is necessary to inflate your profits, but cheating is also necessary to protect you. Provide good coverage. What kind, of patient, what kind of people are you going to get applying for insurance your company? You have good coverage, you treat people nicely, you're respectful, you don't hassle people. You're going to get sicker clients because the sicker people are the ones who are going to notice. It's going to be important to them. If you have sicker clients, what do you have to do to cover your costs? You have to raise your rates. You raise your rates. Who's going to leave? Who's going to stay with you? The sick people will still stay with you because you have good coverage, you're a nice company. Healthy people are going to say, ah, I don't know, those rates are pretty high. And I'm not getting anything out of the nice coverage because I never get sick anyway. So I think I'll just find do without. Or I'll find a company that um, has lower rates. Lower rates because they drive away the sick people. So you get a group that's ever sicker. And then you have to raise your rates more. And when you raise your rates more, more healthy people leave. And you get a clientele that's even sicker. Yeah, that's the insurance company death spiral, spiral, and that's why even nice people and okay, I am willing to admit that it is possible, it is conceivable that there is a decent person in management of an American health insurance company. It's possible. I find it unlikely, but it's possible. It is possible that there's a decent person there. It's possible that there's a decent person in the tobacco industry. It's possible that there's a decent person in the porn industry. It's possible. Even that decent person will get rid of the good coverage. Bad coverage. Nasty forms. Lots of work. Get healthy. Drive away the sick people. You'll get healthier clients. Lower rates. Lower rates will attract healthy people. And then lower rates attracting more healthy people and more profits. That's what the insurance companies want to do. And that's why they're evil. Because we don't need insurance for the healthy people. We need insurance for when we get sick. And we don't need all these bureaucratic forms and all this paperwork and all this advertising and all this selection business. We want everybody to be covered. The insurance companies spend a ton of money reducing the number of people covered. It has been estimated that in Massachusetts alone, a state with 2% of the American population and a state with a relatively efficient health care system because of the health care law sponsored by former Governor Romney, who's now running for president, campaigning against the national version of his law. But that's another story. Um, in Massachusetts alone, abolishing private health insurance and moving to a single payer system sponsored by the state would save about $5 billion in the first year. 
that is almost a thousand dollars a person. Now economists have a joke that George Stigler, an economist at the University of Chicago, was walking down the street with a graduate student. And the graduate student said, oh, look, there's a $20 bill on the street. I'll go get it. And Stigler said to her, don't bother. Just, if it were there, if it were real, somebody else would have picked it up already. We have a thousand dollar bill in Massachusetts sitting on the, on the street. You wonder whether people will ever pick it up. Until then, thank you and have a nice day. Bye-bye.